Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us here today at Healy River Arena for this very special day in Coyote's history. We'll start things off by introducing our head table. To my left is Coyote's President of Hockey Operations and General Manager, John Chaika. Next to John, of course, is New Coyote's forward, Taylor Hall. And last but not least, Coyote's head coach, Rick Taka. We'll begin by turning it over to John for a few remarks. John? Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thanks for coming. Um, it's my uh, pleasure to uh, introduce to you uh, one of the top players in the National Hockey League, uh, former Hart Trophy winner, Taylor Hall. Uh, i also like to uh, welcome his girlfriend, uh, Rachel, as well as uh, his family uh, to our pack. Um, you know, I, I want to take this time to uh, thank our owner, Alex Morello, for giving us the opportunity to make this acquisition. Uh, without his support and will to win, you know, we wouldn't be here today. So uh, really appreciate that. He's a big part of what we're doing here, uh, certainly between, you know, Phil Kessel and, and Taylor. Uh, it's been a paradigm shift in terms of how we're operating and, and the things we're doing here. So it's been a uh, joy to work with him and just wanted to say thank you. Uh, you know, when Talk and I first came here, uh, everything we've done uh, from day one has been about winning. Um, you know, there's been some popular decisions we've made, some unpopular ones, but at the end of the day, that's all it's been about. Uh, you know, getting a chance to do some due diligence and talk to some people that know Taylor well, uh, we know that, that, that's, that that's all he cares about. That's, that's his main focus, his sole focus. Um, and so in that sense, from, from ownership up top uh, to management, coaching staff, all the way down to the players and Taylor, uh, there's a complete alignment, and, uh, and that's what we're about. So, uh, you know, with that being said, I wanted to welcome Taylor to the pack. Thanks, John. Uh, at this time, we'll open the floor for questions from the media. A reminder to please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. We'll begin with Rick Morin from the Republic. Taylor, I know we've we've been talking to you a lot the last couple of days. It's been a, a crazy whirlwind for you, but you know to get a chance to practice with your new teammates here at Gila River Arena, and I mean, uh, can you just kind of take us through the the whirlwind of the last couple of days, and I guess where you are as things stand right now? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's been a change. There's no doubt. Um, but I think it's a positive one and, and one that um, has been made very seamless by the players in the room, the organization. Um, everyone that works for, for the team has made it um, just about playing hockey, and really that's, that's what I'm here to do, um, here to, uh, to contribute um, to a winning team, uh, play as well as I can on both sides of the puck. And it's, uh, but it has been crazy. I won't, I won't lie to you. It's... Um, it's been a change, and uh, hopefully as the days go on, I feel more comfortable and um, just worry about playing hockey right now. Uh, Matt Levin for, from Arizona Sports. Rick, my question's for you. I guess just with what your group has done this year, spent some time in first place in the Pacific Division, have a pretty good season so far. What does it mean to you and, and to your players, do you think, that the front office and ownership has invested more into what your group is doing? Well, I mean, it's it's huge for me. Um, well, for everybody, I, I I just know when John told me we we acquired uh, Taylor, the, the juice, for, not so much from the coaching staff, like it just trickled down the trainers. Um, it, the excitement that um, you know you acquire a guy like him, you know, um, is something that I think the fan base, you know, is so excited about. Um, you know, I know John, you know, made a point. You know, they deserve. You know, they deserve it. Alex Morello comes in here, stabilizes everything. Um, it just it just adds juice to everybody, you know. Um, and now we have to play hockey. Like Taylor said, like he's here to play hockey, you know, and that's it. Um, that's why we're excited about it. Plus, he's a, you know, he's a hockey nerd. You know, I love hockey nerds. We, 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 we love hockey nerds around here. <laughs> Really joining the group of guys who have already been doing well this year, and, and you're that piece to take them to the next step. Yeah, it's um, it's everything I could have wanted with uh, with a midseason trade. To be honest, um, you know, not, not every day can you 
can you jump that many spots in the standings? It's uh, it's unfortunate the season that we were having in Jersey, but to join a group like this that um, is playing well, and I, and I you know I don't want to speak for anyone else, but you know hopefully there's another another level that we can get to um, and hold the spot that we that we have in the standings. Um, yeah, I, I, guys do these press conferences like I said before, and they say the word excited you know a lot, but. That's really what it is. There's a there's a great opportunity in front of us, and for me, um, I'll find my place in the lineup. I'll find my place in the room. But in the in the short term, it's just about winning games and, and keeping our spot there. So I'm driving down the freeway this morning on the way to the rink, and there's a big billboard that has you in that jersey on it. It says, "Welcome to our pack." Did you see that A or anything like that? No, I was I was pretty groggy this morning. But, <laughs> but, um, so, no, that's I mean that's awesome, and um, that's one of the great things about what's going on here is is there seems to be a buzz building and and some excitement, and you know we talk a lot about the on ice and the structure and all that, but at the end of the day we're um, we're entertainment for people, and and hopefully um, guys like myself and. And a lot of these other young players, and, and really the team that we have here. Hopefully, we can keep building that and and get some excitement really into the area here. My follow to that is, I know you're a hockey player, and that's what you care about most. But I mean, you are a number one pick in Edmonton in a crazy market. Obviously, when you're traded to New Jersey, that's a big deal. How did those experiences help you now? Because you're more than a hockey player here, as you can tell. Yeah, um, I think I've had a a good blend of really. Um, of different markets, um, being in Edmonton was was crazy right off the bat, and I think that that kind of taught me um, how to act away from the rink, how to conduct yourself. And, and in Jersey, um, I grew a lot as a player, as a leader. Um, had some really good coaches and and uh, and front office staff that that guided me in the right direction. And here, uh, you know, I don't want to say I'm a finished product, but I like to think I know what I can add to a team, how I need to play, and and how I can be a leader. And as the season goes on, that'll that'll continue to grow. Hey, John, can you speak to the patience it took to get to this point and what it was like to actually make the move to pull the trigger on it? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it's been you know it's been a building process for us here. Uh, obviously, it's taken us a couple of years to get to this stage. Um, and you know, it, 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 there's no shortcuts. You know, I think. Uh, the moves we made, say, two years ago have kind of set us up to be in a position where we could acquire a player like this. Um, you know, I think the, the, the group that we've drafted and developed is, is a really strong part of what we've been able to accomplish here. Um, they understand what it takes to win now uh, through, you know, working with talk and our staff, development staff, all the way up through the American League, a lot of these guys. So, you know, that's a big part of what we're trying to do. But we've been able to make some some trades, the, the Nicholas Yarmelsons, Derek Stepons, you know, a few signings as well. And really tried to build this team up uh, to where it is today. And, uh, you know, we had to use some of our, our, you know, draft capital and things like that to, to get a player of this caliber, but really felt like it was a, you know, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to acquire a player, uh, like Taylor said, in his prime, uh, ready to come in and contribute um, and hopefully take this entire organization to another level. And, uh, you know, like he said, I think he's right. I think there's, there's more to give with this group too, and that's the exciting part. And now we get to add a player at this caliber and, Hopefully, get Nick Yarmelson back. Uh, you know, we think it's a big season for us, and expect to have success. And I uh, think there's a bright future ahead as well. Still, hey, Larry. Um, you know, you, you talked about how it's been kind of a whirlwind. You know, getting into town and, and playing right away. Just tell us about you know having an effect right away in your first game, and you know coming up with that big assist that ended up being the game winner. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it certainly wasn't a, a Picasso by any means, but. Um, you know, I I did my best to, to get myself ready to play um, under the circumstances. The you know the organization did um, a fantastic job getting me to um, to San Jose, and, and I was able to to skate in the morning and get a rest in the afternoon. And I wanted to play as, as um, I'd been sitting out for a week, and um, I'm a hockey player. I'm healthy, so I want to play. And uh, really, just tried to make an impact however I could. Um, ended up being basically the last shift of of my game and uh, like I said they're not all, all going to be masterpieces but if you can find a way to man, make an impact um, no matter when it is during the game you, you, you got to do that and overall it's just nice to see a win um, to get that feeling in the room um, we're in first place and that's a team that's that's hunting for us and, and those are big games no matter 
no matter what time of the year it is. Seth Askelson, Ice Time Hockey Southwest. Uh, you've been in the league long enough to kind of see what's been going on in Arizona, and I know you've only been on the team for three days, but what is the difference and what are some of the changes you've noticed with this organization from when you first entered the league? Um, I think it's it, it's there's a lot. Um, it used to be more of a veteran team, a team that um, I wouldn't say was defensive-minded, but certainly had a, a way of playing that was different than, than other teams. Um, I know from from paying attention to just the last couple of years since um, since Rick and John have, have come here, it's it's been an offensive group. It's been a, a group that wants to play fast and um, inject a lot of youth into the lineup as much as they can. And that's really what the the NHL is is about today. Um, if you want to point to a franchise that's that's had a, a really good tra trajectory over the last couple of years, it's it's Arizona and. That's a that's a really good thing for a player um, of my age, and and uh, and it's great to come into. Taylor, John has uh, said that you know he he wants to sell you on on Arizona by getting you here and indoctrinating you into what is becoming a winning culture here, and you're obviously a pending UFA at the end of the year. So my question for you would be, how open minded are you at this point? And I guess does that take any pressure off you and just knowing that you can just come in and play hockey and just let things happen and let things take their course in that regard? Yeah, I think that's really the way it is. Um, we're about winning here, and uh, I think if if we win, if we do well as a team, that kind of stuff is going to sort itself out. And, and to answer your question, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely open open minded about about everything, and uh, it's not really my focus right now. I think John and I spoke briefly about it. It's it's more about just playing hockey, winning games, and seeing where that takes us. And you know, when it's time to have a conversation, we'll do that. Would be, were you surprised that you know John and the Coyotes took that approach, and were you surprised maybe that they didn't want to talk extension right away? And what what was your reaction? Did you like that they took that approach? Um, yeah, I'm, I I never been through this, so um, I was gonna I was ready to play for for Jersey until they told me not to. Um, I'm here to play hockey and and win games and contribute. Like I said, find my place in the dressing room, and when it's time to chat about that stuff, we will. But um, I've been open-minded since the start of this season when I was playing for the Devils, and, and that hasn't changed since I've got here. Coach Tockett, you get to work with these players provided <coughs> directly, uh, and you've mentioned that your coaching style doesn't change uh, regardless of the roster. What qualities, aspects of Taylor's game fit so well into your style and, and can enhance that coaching style? Well, an elite rush player, like, um, you know, it's something that we've done well this year. Um, Getting uh, Halsey here, it, it just adds another level of a rush team, um, something we've worked on. The the thing that intrigues me that he'll help us is in the ozone, which we have to get better at. <clears throat> the, you know, he reminds me, and I don't, I'm not going to compare players, but I just when I was in pitch with the, the give and go around the net type of sticky type of guy, like on that, that goal was a sticky type of play, you know, um, knocking a couple of guys off, winning the battle and giving the puck to OEL. Those are the, goal, the, the goals that win your big games. The, those get you in the playoffs. That Those goals are in the playoff goals. So, um, you know, I, I love those type of guys. I think that's the reason for me I'm excited about is that part. The other part, he's obviously elite, but those things around the net, you know, being able to knock people off the puck and, and, and keeping the puck, that's a skill that not a lot of guys have in the league. And that's the one thing that excites our, our coaching staff here and, and uh, John. And a follow-up for you, John. Yep. Um, as time has progressed here with, with all these names and the attention, do you feel like Arizona, not to get cliche on you, is, is becoming a hot spot, not just for the sport, <laughs> um, but, but for where hockey players want to play, live, um, and, and the continued progression of that? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, that's certainly our intent. You know, We want to build it. We realize we got to earn that. But... Uh, Certainly feel like we're on the right track, and and uh, like you mentioned, not only you know for the NHL players, but but growing the sport of hockey in in, uh, in the state. And I think that's a huge responsibility of ours in a non-traditional market. And uh, I think we take a lot of pride in that. And uh, you know, bringing together or bringing over players like like Taylor and Phil and these guys that uh, you know have a great resume and and are great players and they're fun to watch. You know, I think that's a big part of it. But but ultimately, like I said, we're in the winning business and. Uh, you know our results will speak for themselves, and and we're just trying to do the best job we can with uh, what we got here, and and uh, you know go about building our team in the best possible way, and and think that if we do that and control what we can control, uh, we got some good people in place, and uh, you know the sky's the limit. 
John Derek Stepan um, expressed that he was pleased that there were any subtractions from the existing roster. That yeah. the, the news came down that Taylor would come here. That you know people kind of held their breath to see who might be going the other way. How big was that for you when you were negotiating this trade that you didn't want to take pieces off the the active roster? Yeah, that was a prerequisite um, for the move. Uh, I think uh, you know uh, it's a tight group. Uh, Step would tell you that Taylor will experience it. Uh, we're proud of those guys. Like, uh, yeah, again, they've grown up together. They've we've gone through some adversity together now, and uh, you know, built up some scar tissue. And uh, I think they earned the right to add to the group and supplement the group. And and that was certainly something we were looking to do when we uh, acquired a player like Taylor was to, to add. And uh, again, we we felt like it was a rare opportunity that a player of this caliber becomes available. Um, but even rarer that you know he fits a very specific need that our team has. You know, we think we got two elite goalies. Uh, we've been one of the better defensive teams for a couple of years now. We've got some great young forwards um, that are, you know, still learning their way and still growing and evolving. But to get a, you know, a star in his prime that comes in with uh, the confidence that Taylor does and accomplish what he has, um, but also is motivated as I know he is. Like, uh, you know, it, the stars kind of aligned in that sense. And um, you know, to, to keep the group together, it was it was almost too good to be true. And um, you know, uh, we were very fortunate and uh, opportunistic. And like I said, with, a, with support from ownership, you know, these things come together. And, um, you know, so far it's been great. And Taylor, kind of on that note, I know it's really early, but what's your early read on kind of the room and what it's like in there, the dynamic between those guys, and, and what was sort of the early welcome for you when you first arrived? Um, yeah, I think one of the first things I notice is um, I, I – the group's not laid back, but everyone enjoys each other's company. And um, uh, there's definitely uh, a sense of um, guys know their role. Guys are comfortable in their own skin and in the room and on the ice. And, and that's a really good situation to come into as a as a player like myself. Um, I'm trying to fit in with them and, and, uh, and do the best I can on the ice as, as soon as I can here. But um, to come into a, a dressing room where... Um, there's a really good blend of, of older guys that have played in cup finals, you know, in, in, uh, in the Stanley Cup playoffs a lot, and then some younger guys that, that are really hungry. Um, it's a very good situation. Yeah, Taylor, um, you, you, you talked about the, the locker room. Yeah, how important is it to, to join a locker room that has a good mix of younger players and experienced players, especially when it's someone like yourself that, that's looking to get more experience when it comes to postseason and a, a, a core group that is hungry to win and also has a chance to win this year and win now. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as the league evolves, it, it seems like um, the teams that have, have sustain, sustained success are are the teams with a really good blend of veteran guys and, and younger guys that, that are hungry to win. And like I said, that's really what I'm coming into now. Um, couldn't be a better situation. Um, ton of really good skill players to play with up front and some guys on, on the back end that can defend and, and move the puck well. And, and obviously two goalies that have played well, not only this year, but for a pretty extended period of time. Um, the room dynamic is huge. You know, it's not something that's really going to show up in, um, in any statistics, but um, having a good culture, having a group that likes playing for each other is huge. And um, you know, I want to fit into that seamlessly. Coach Hockett, for you, um, what is it like to integrate one guy who's excited to be here and uh, the players are excited for him to get in rather than having to integrate two or three new pieces? Yeah, um, well, it, listen, it, for me, uh, like, and I, we, I've, yeah, I haven't talked a ton with uh, Taylor about this, but, you know, I don't want him to have to adjust to everybody. He's, he's just going to be himself. You know, that's the easiest thing. And, will adjust as, as it goes on. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big, I've been traded a bunch myself, um, maybe too many times, but <laughs> the, the best advice I give to players, you know, and Taylor's been around the block and he's, he's, a, he's a young kid that's played a lot of years, in the, you know, just, just be yourself. You know, you don't have to just, you know, you know just play. You know, he's a shooter, shoot it. Like we'll, we'll, we'll adjust from there. If you're a rush guy, take the puck and go like, I just a big believer that and players just, they just morph themselves around that, you know. I, that's why I like this group. Um, you know, they're going to be. I told those guys the other day, just be yourself. You know, you don't. All of a sudden, we're not just going to start changing our system. You know, we're going to go more offensive, more defensive. We're just going to play. And uh, when you acquire a guy like Taylor, he does his thing, and we'll adjust to him. 
Jody Jackson, Fox Sports Arizona. Question for Taylor, but Rick, if you could kind of follow up. So the power play, it's been hot at times this year, um, inconsistent at other times. Taylor, how do you think you can affect um, the power play? And, and also, um, you know, Rick, same question for you. Uh, yeah, I think um, I've gotten better at playing on the power play over, over the course of my career. Early on, I, I used to struggle with it. And, and um, in the last few years, slowing the game down and, and playing on the power play has become more comfortable for me. I feel like I can help with controlled entries and um, really sustaining offense in their end by, uh, by winning battles for pucks. I mean, you watch a power play and you see the maybe the backdoor goal or, or a one-timer goal, but usually it's the play beforehand where you're, you're winning a battle, um, you know, you're gaining possession back uh, from the other team and, and then making plays after that. And I feel like I can be, um, be gritty and, and win battles, but also make plays with the puck at the same time. And as, uh, as time goes on, we have, we have a lot of weapons to make our power play dangerous. Yeah, um, well, from, from, from me, so if you go to last year uh, when we played these guys, Taylor scored a, the game winner in the power play. And then when we played him at the beginning of this year, he hit um, Hughes for a uh, seam play on a, on a shot. And then he delivered a couple near the end. We were, you know, we were hanging, on, actually, hanging on to the game there, and he hit Simmons on a couple of plays that Simmons almost scored. So those are the elements of a power play that he can add you know like you just talked about like a, you know i'm big on retrievals we have to get better as a unit on retrievals he can do that his shots elite he's got a great one timer and he's he'll deliver pucks to the net and he can and he can gain entries you know if you can check all the boxes of, of a player usually you, you know you, some guys are 3 out of 5 like he's got 5 out of 5 when it comes to a power play guy so um, and we saw that against jersey when we played us so you know that's something that he'll add with us and and it's the same thing, you know. He's going to do his thing, and we'll adjust to him on the power play, and vice versa. You know, you know, we got Phil Kessel who can pass the puck, but you know, Phil's going to have to shoot the puck too, and Taylor can go to the net. Like it's, it's, it's not one or the other. It's just you just do a check you all, all those five boxes, and that's what a good power play does. Yeah. Uh, sorry, this is the phone, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, this is an embarrassing question, but it's kind of funny watching as Taylor speaks generally about wanting to win or specifics of like X's and O's, like you just, you're like nodding along. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like what does a guy like that do for your team, your room, et cetera? Well, it's his attitude for me. Um, you know, you know, talking to a few people, uh, I actually talked to, uh, I, who I respect immensely, John Hines. He couldn't say enough about him. You know, John Hines, I, I think he's a great coach. And um, his willingness to, to, to obviously he's in great shape. He wants to win. He's a hockey nerd, you know. And you know we joke about it, but you know he wants to know stuff. You know, the, I mean, uh, you know I learned a lot from my days in Pittsburgh from having those type of players. They 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 test you. You got to know your stuff. I, I feel Taylor's that type of guy from talking to Heinze. You know he wants to know some stuff. He wants to be coached. He wants to win. You know he's, you know all that other stuff will sort itself out. You know he wants to play big games. And that's what big game players want to do. So that's that that adds juice to me, but it also makes keeps me on my toes. I mean, I got I got to be ready to go. Uh, you know, anytime you you know with our team we have or the guys that acquire it, you got to be ready to go. And that's uh, our, our coaching staff is prepared for this sort of stuff, which is which is good. Taylor, uh, do you think you're ever going to get used to wearing shorts to the rink? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean that's a that's a pretty nice touch. Um, you know, walking out of the hotel this morning and, and seeing, you know, just the, <laughs> the climate outside was was pretty nice. It adds a adds a pep to your step. And um, after playing in Edmonton and and Jersey, it's a uh, it's a nice change. Um, but I'll play hockey anywhere. Um, but uh, I think as the season goes on, you know, some sometimes it can, it can seem like Groundhog Day, but when you, you know when you're walking outside and, and you're able to uh, to get away from from the rink and enjoy yourself and um, in all that Arizona has to offer, um, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I know Michael Grabner is somebody you've stayed in touch with since you guys played together a little bit in Jersey. Has he shared with you anything about what it's like to live in Arizona, what it's like to play in Arizona, kind of giving you a little bit maybe what to expect? Yeah, um, I've talked to a few guys. Um, players that have played here in the past, players that have played here, you know, currently, um, people that know Rick, people that um, have been around John for a long time. And, and I really couldn't get 
um, a negative word, honestly, um, from the way that they treat the players to um, to the on ice product and how they want you to play, um, the plane, the climate, the rink, the, the facilities, everything's been really good, um, and it's lived up to its its reputation. And um, over the last day and a half, I've I've witnessed how easy they've made it on me, um, and already I'm feeling. You know, a lot more comfortable, a lot more comfortable than I thought I would be at this point. Uh, Taylor, um, for maybe reasons unknown, uh, jersey number selection is, is like a huge craze among fans. Ninety-one, uh, guessing the birth year, correct? Yeah, just my birth year. Um, probably would have gone with nine or four, but they're both taken, and I didn't want to be that guy to <laughs> to try and take a number. Um, it's not that important to me. Um, just wanted to pick something quickly and and uh, and move on and try and get ready to play. Among fam favorites is the jersey you're wearing. Initial thoughts, style, you style guy, you like it? Yeah, I mean, I, I had a, growing up in Calgary, I had a buddy that uh, we played outdoor hockey all the time together, and this this was his jersey that he wore. <laughs> so that was early That's 2000s, good. and um, it, stayed, it stayed pretty relevant, and I think it looks pretty sharp. More questions for Taylor or the group? All right, we'll do a quick one-on-one -on -one with uh, Taylor and Fox Sports Arizona, and then we'll do some one-on-ones outside. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.